Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat, and I am back. This time I'm back with my second waifu video. And if you remember from the first video, I will cover approximately 10 girls per video. And I'm just going to give basically my thoughts about them. And this was submitted by my viewers, my awesome viewers, my wacky pack. So now, without further ado, let's just get right into the first girl. Now, I actually forgot one My Hero Academia girl last time, so I'm going to start with her. And that is Momo Yayorzu from, of course, My Hero Academia. Now, I'm going to first go off on a little tangent. I mentioned how in the My Hero Academia world, the quirks have no real balance whatsoever. Like, you'll have someone like Froppy who has a very esoteric quirk that I wouldn't want to have, especially since it actually does have a lot of, like, downside. Like, oh, you might end up hibernating. Weird stuff like that. But, like, you have some, like, Bakugo or, like, Todoroki, who are borderline OP. Momo's borderline OP, too, of her power of quote-unquote creation. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about it, because there's going to be that one prude who's going to try to, like, flag my video because I talk about it. But, yeah, she's a very attractive. And, honestly, you can say that with just about every My Hero Academia girl. So that's saying nothing special right here. And her personality is a little prudish. Not, like, overbearing. Like, Uraraka, you can argue, is a bit overbearing like she's a bit like shy not shy she's a bit like oh you shouldn't be doing that you shouldn't be talking about that but momo's more a little low-key about it but at the same time like one with her outfit which is the point of contention a lot of people make one thing a lot of people compare her to is midnight who is literally the reason why there's restrictions on what female heroes could wear but at the same time, in Midnight, where Midnight, that's basically her personality's BDSM stuff, Momo stays back from that, which I can appreciate, honestly. And she's actually very intelligent. I think they, I think at one point they said she was, like, she ranked the highest in, like, this intelligence test of all the students. So she knows what she's doing. She's got very strong powers, like I mentioned. So I got to appreciate that, you know? And ultimately, I will give her an 8 out of 10. Now, the second girl I am going to cover, once I scroll to the top of my Microsoft Word power, Microsoft Word document, is the blonde with crown of her eyes from Fire Force. Now, this is interesting. Fire Force being a Tanami show, a show that was on Tanami for both its seasons. And I didn't really remember this character or didn't watch the episode she was in because I was very in and out of Fire Force. So, but one thing I don't like is her general, like, the whole thing with the visor, which is in her name, basically. And it's like, oh, that's like part of her thing. This is a very common... I think because of people saw LeVar Burton in whatever version of Star Trek he's in, New Generation or whatever, thought it looked awesome. So they started giving all their characters this visor thing. And I think that's where her inspira the inspiration for that is. And also, I, I don't like tattoos. The number one turnoff for me for women is having tattoos. Like, I know it's like a millennial thing, but I hate it. And also, she basically wears a Snuggie the entire time, too. And I also kind of have a thing against people wearing Snuggies. So, she has a very sad backstory. And basically, her internal torment is to basically hear all of human unconsciousness, including the very dark thoughts they have. But also, and this is something kind of like the, uh, the uh, stripper cat girls from Dominion Tank Police that I covered in the previous video, very, very immature. And that's just kind of how she is. And although I really, I, I, I have a sucker for bad back, for sad backstories like that, honestly. So that helped her a lot. But yet again, I am not feeling her appearance with the Snuggie and the tattoo and the visor stuff. So I'm going to give her a 7.5 out of 10. The third girl I'm going to cover is... Luca? It might be Lusa. L-U-C-A from Berserk. Now, from what I'm able to glean from her personality is that she's a very sweet, kind, generous woman. And from what I can tell, she's very attractive, but if you know Berserk, one of the most well-known things about Berserk was how the anime, uh, I'm gonna show a screenshot from, not a screenshot, I'm gonna show an image from it. I'm gonna be showing the image of her from it. And you sh try to tell me that this does not look like something Rooster Teeth would shit out in 30 minutes. And that's nothing to do with her character, so I didn't really hold that against her. But at the same time, her character, her whole character is based on being 
oh, I'm sweet and nice, but, like, her trying to fight off her own instinct to be naive about stuff. And that's apparently very plot important. There really wasn't that much I could find about this character, so I'm kind of grasping at some straws. I know Berserk was a well-known manga, well-known anime and whatnot, but at the same time, though, she's good at... It's like, she hits... She's good at some of the things I'm really into, but at the same time, she doesn't really excel any of them, and for that, I have to give her a 6.5 out of 10. Now, the next one is Bulma from Dragon Ball in general, but I got the person quoted a Dragon Ball Super. She is actually very attractive, in my opinion. And another thing, another thing I don't think I've actually mentioned yet in any of these videos that I think is a massive turn on is being very, very intelligent. Well, I kind of did with Momo, but the whatnot. But again, very intelligent. But at the same time, that intelligence kind of leads her to be very vain. I mean, the one of the things she's most well known for is her just repertoire of her wardrobe. She's wearing something like every five minutes, or basically she's wearing something else. And that's kind of become one of her more distinctive things. Like my personal favorite outfit she had is the one where she had the cap that literally just said Bulma on it. I thought that was pretty funny. And honestly, if I had a cap that said Super Orange Cat on it, I would be, I would buy that in an instant probably. I would be totally into that. But again, that whole brattiness probably outweighs the intelligence for me. So she's, I'm uh, not reading down here. I think I gave her the lowest number so far. I gave her a 6 out of 10 for that. And now the next one. This is not anime, but very anime inspired. And that is Raven and Starfire from Teen Titans. Growing up, I didn't, I didn't have to do much research about this. Because growing up, I loved Teen Titans. And honestly, I really love both these girls also. For different reasons. And I think the show did a great job of portraying, like, the two female superheroes as being, like, polar opposites in many ways, but still being able to work together. And that's something I really like about their personalities. Now, I'm going to kind of go one at a time here. I'm going to start with Raven. She's, of course, if you've watched Teen Titans, she's very dark, very mysterious, and she can be a bit cold, particularly to Beast Boy. But at the same time, she has shown on numerous occasions that she's ultimately caring like, wasn't there an episode, I forget if this was Raven or Starfire, I want to say it was Raven, where she had to, like, take care of kids or something? I don't know. And it's like, and it's like she ultimately saved them, and it shows she does have quite a bit of a heart, despite her demeanor, you know? And honestly, again, I have a thing for short hair, and I think it's just really cute, personally, and that weighs heavily in my mind with Raven. I gave her a 7.5. Now, Starfire, she's in many ways, outwardly, definitely the opposite of Raven. She's very outwardly warm. She's very bubbling. She's also very loving, sweet, kind. She will always stick up for her teammates. She is the ultimate team player. And also, Raven and Starfire are, like, very powerful, too. Like, they have outright superpowers, while some, like, Robin has to use gadgets and stuff. And that's another, okay, a brief sidebar. Robin is the most screwed over of the five Teen Titans. Like, he throws gadgets and stuff. Cyborg can just shoot a cannon. Beast Boy can turn into whatever enemy he wants. Raven and Starfire can just shoot energy. That's just awesome. And Robin's just stuck. Well, he's the team leader. But, like, I'm pretty sure the other four, even one-on-one, -on -one, could destroy Robin in a fight. But, again, about Starfire, her only downside for me is that she's kind of unintelligent. You can argue it's not necessarily that she's unintelligent, but the fact that they're really playing up the whole she's an alien and doesn't quite understand Earth. And for that, I gave her an 8 out of 10. Next girl is Annie from Attack on Titan. Now, this is a one that a lot of people, I bet, were been waiting for. She's, a, she's very cute, too. That's a very common word in these. I'm going to say, like, 80% of these girls are cute. And that's basically my code for... You're attractive, and I want to flirt with you, but, like, you're not designed to be, like, a sex symbol, which is a good thing, because unless you really, really handle that well, that could be, that could drag you down. Like, for example, the only female character I can immediately think of that uses the attractiveness as a positive character trait is Fujiko Mine from the Lupin series. Okay, off of sidebar, back to Annie from Attack on Titan. She's a very great fighter. Again, personal thing I love, I just like it when a girl can at least sustain herself. I hate it, like, the whole concept of girls, like, begging you to help them or needing you or 
having to be codependent. I hate that. But again, great writer like that. And she's also very intelligent. You know what I said about that. And she has a very dark sense of humor, which is, again, another thing I personally like. And I would have been dark with my humor on this channel. But again, YouTube would probably kicked me off if I went as dark as I really wanted to with some of the jokes. But a downside she has is that she's very quick to violence. And that's something I don't like because, again, you would be on pins and needles around her, you know. And also, she's a bit of a downer. So that kind of decreases it, too. And for that, I have to give her a 7.5 out of 10. Now, the next pairing I have is Tornado and the sister from One Punch Man. I'm going to presume that's the terrible Tornado and Fubuki. Now, I like both of them. Both of them are very physically attractive. Both outwardly would act like, oh, they're going to walk all over you, domineering, let me take control type personality, you know. But at the same time, as we saw, at least in season two, Fubuki does have a bit of a vulnerable side, especially with regards to her sense of inferiority compared to her younger and more successful sister, which I thought was an interesting plot point they're brought up. And I hope future One Punch Man, I haven't read the manga, asked season two. I hope that is more further addressed, because that's something I think could really turn into a great plot line. And again, both are extremely talented. Tornado being the second overall ranked hero, and Fubuki being the, I believe, the number one person in the beat here. And again, with how the politics are, she actually would rather be like, it's better to be like the top of a tier than like towards the bottom of the next tier, even though that's technically a higher rank. And that's something the show did a good job of explaining kind of this social hierarchy is more than just simply being the absolute highest. And again, I like both characters, and I'm a sucker for the bitchiness that Terrible Tornado has. I really like her for that. You know, I'll give the Tornado an 8 out of 10, Fubuki also an 8 out of 10, actually. The next one is Lisa Lisu, Lisa Lisa from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Now, she's pretty attractive. I really like that, and honestly, like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm going to say that with virtually every girl here. Like, this is a waifu list. You're not going to... I'm pretty sure for everyone, they're going to choose an attractive character to be the right food. So really, a lot of this is redundant, but why not say it again? Lisa Lisa is also a very courageous character. And if you don't look at JoJo Part 6 Stone Ocean, JoJo doesn't have that many very out there, courageous female characters. Like, a lot of them end up being, like, borderline, like, damsels in distress. Like, top of my head, the only one I could think of is, oh god. Is Trisha Una is the only one I can think of top of my head that would be fit into the category of she's willing to fight for herself and stand up for it. And yet again, ultimately, like in the JoJo universe, if you're not a stand user, you're kind of screwed because stand users are broken. And the whole JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is simply people with broken abilities run out by other people with broken abilities, which is part of the fun because it, ne it necessitates a bit of trickery, which I really liked watching. And Figuring out how the Joe boys are going to figure out how to defeat this weekly villain who's named after a musician or a song. And that's something a lot of people know. Araki really likes music. So a lot of his characters, a lot of the stands are named after songs, they're named after bands. And Lisa Lisa is the name of an artist from the mid-80s. An artist I actually personally like. And when I researched her, I could not get the song head to toe out of my head, you know. And again, enough of a sidebar. She also has a bit of a soft side, a bit of a personal side. And she's not, actually, she's not a stand user. She's a real user. And that's a whole nother thing to describe. And I'm probably like 15 minutes in this video already. And I've got like two more girls to talk about. So I can't go into detail about that. And she's, of course, by that, one of the more powerful JoJo characters. Definitely one of the more powerful female JoJo characters. And I like that. I give her a 7.5 out of 10. The next character is Gina from Undead Luck. Now, when I researched Gina, I instinctively had Har Har Haruko stuck in my head. Mostly for the fact that although they're both technically old, they look very young. And, and also Gina is very upbeat and very bratty. Kind of like uh, Bulma in a way. But at the same time, she reminds me also of I'm going to murder this pronunciation, Nonone Jakuzere, the, the pink-haired girl from Kill a Kill. That's another girl I thought of when I was looking up Gina in terms of that personality, the thing that they're really powerful, that they're kind of bratty, 
at the same time, their own hubris is the fact that they're bratty and they think they're a know-it-all. But Gina is a downright psychopath, too. You know, like Har Har Harko. And part of the plot is that she wants to die. And that's a whole other thing that, again, I'm like 60 minutes into this video. If I described why she wanted to die and the whole plot behind it, it would take forever. And honestly, I'm a sucker for psychopaths, too, I guess. I mean, I, Har Har Harko and Neferpedo from Hunter x Hunter are two of my waifus. I have something wrong in my head. I give her, I give Gina an 8 out of 10. Last girl is Lofter from IBO. Now she's very bubbly, kind of like Starfire, and she acts like a kid, like basically half the waifus in this list so far. And basically how they described her is that she's very confident at her job. I like that. I li like I said, and I mentioned earlier, I like a woman who could pick herself up by her own bootstraps. She, she don't need no man, basically. And that they've described her as being a really great Gundam pilot, too. And that's something I can appreciate. And from appearance, she kind of, in a weird way, reminds me of Nami from One Piece. And I like Nami from One Piece, so I guess that helped, too. Although her character isn't necessarily that emotionally deep. In many ways, although they do give her a plot line, she does seem a bit like a love interest written to be a love interest. And I have to give credit, I have to knock credit down for that. So I gave her a 7 out of 10. What do you guys think? What's your thoughts on those waifus? I mentioned this video. Leave your comments, leave your opinions down below. Next waifu video should be up a little sooner than this one ended up being up. But what do you guys think? Opinions, comments below. I am the Super Orange Cat, and that is all.